Ms. Gaspar, it's good to have you back. We appreciate you, uh, what you've done so far. We're looking forward to this update. So um, I have asked her, we, this, this committee has been engaged in learning on how we've uh, made ourselves more, uh, I guess, IT friendly and our information technology tools for the public. Um, and we've got the Explorer app and everybody's using it and downloading it. And, uh, but Jill's going to talk today about what's exciting for the cemetery, uh, the personnel that actually manage and, and conduct the business of the cemetery. And so I'm going to let her, I'm going to turn over to her. She's got some fun tools. She's going to let you guys play with some things um, to see our, our next generation of management of the cemetery. Thank you. Hi. As Ms. James was saying, we are making great strides to modernize our IT efforts here at the cemetery. So one of the um, pieces that we have considered are mobile tablets, uh, particularly when we consider our field ops staff who are out in the field, at the cemetery rather, and they're supporting burial services. Going back and, and to a desktop is not always convenient. So implementing tablets in the field is, is a, a great way for them to continue their workload, their administrative tasks, while perhaps they're waiting for a funeral service to pass. Um, so these are ruggedized Dell tablets. I'm going to pass them around. I do have the website loaded. Um, this has a stylus so you can tap to explore. It rotates. Feel free to break it. I like breaking things. I was going to say, we are at that, that is a phase of development we're in, so I will count this as one of our tests of the device. So if you break it, then Jill's more excited than if you don't. So we have, we have a couple of things. I don't know, sir, if it's marine proof or not. So the one that's going down the left side, it has the attachment. No touch screen. It does, it does have a touch screen, so it is meant to function as a tablet or like a desktop with the, like I said, with the keyboard. Um, as I mentioned, with field ops, because they may be in their trucks or in factors, we do have vehicle mounts. I didn't bring those, but essentially they suction up to the, to the engine. Um, we consider these Dell tablets um, mostly because they are recognized. So when you're in the cemetery and you're dealing with dirt, you might fall. Uh, they handle the shock of the drop and, and dust. Um, the other piece is the long-term implementation of these tablets is to accommodate our um, business systems. For example, the ISS, ANC Mapper, and those are caffeinated systems. So these tablets meet the requirement of our information assurance uh, policies that we need to comply with. Um, they will be run off of Army accredited uh, network, essentially allowing for any intrusion detection monitoring. So we believe that these were probably the most locked down uh, systems that we could implement. Yeah. Um, we do currently have 10 of them that have been distributed for testing for our quality assurance folks who have been taking headstone photos with them. Um, we do have the, you know, the one in our possession here with OCIO. ANMC has also used it to support their mission for testing. Um, and we do have some feedback oh, on that, um, some comments of, I guess, the, the ease of use in the field. Um, our current photo app right now, we use iPhones, but the tablets, um, depending on the user, some are more comfortable with phones, some do like the tablet, uh, particularly when you're considering data entry. On the tablet, we've got a larger screen keyboard, so that was some positive feedback. Jill, do you want to mention anything about the screen resolution and sunlight? Um, yeah. so the other benefit, too, with these screens is that when you are out in the field, you're not going to feel the resolution does allow for this daytime view, making it more readable and um, a bit more clear for users. What is EISS? It is the Enterprise Internet Services System. So that is the system that we use to manage all of our decedent uh, records and uh, any, any um, aspects of the burial. So to follow on, like I said, they are uh, ANSI Explorer. Uh, 
website is loaded on there. And I just wanted to <coughs> say that we, since our last meeting, um, we have restored our CMS, which is our content management system. Um, and then one of the, the comments that we had was talking about en enabling subpages. Uh, I think we talked about the World War I uh, anniversary. So we are in development for building that piece out. Uh, and again, the content management system was designed to be less dependent on our contractors for managing any of the uh, information that's displayed in, in the mobile and web apps that we have for support. Um, we did update the uh, user interface for the CMS, so essentially it does, um, we've modernized it. It is much easier to use for our staff who I think our previous version was less user friendly. I struggled sometimes. I um, also, we did update our URLs from HTTP to HTTPS to make it more secure. So we are continually progressing to make our systems locked down as possible to comply with Army and DOD regulation. Um, <coughs> we've also um, created individual URLs for our kiosks. I think one of our, um, one of the things we're always curious is to know how they're being used, who's using it. So by creating these individual URLs, we are able to track some of those metrics. Um, so we did have a busy Memorial Day weekend. Um, I did write a couple of stats. I kind of consolidated it, but um, we had, at least for the website, we had about 125,000 sessions. And with the, um, the mobile app on Memorial Day itself, we had about 15,000 um, uh, downloads or <coughs> um, of new users. So it was a busy weekend. Um, we did talk about the in our last uh, meeting how we switched data centers. Uh, and doing that, we did notice significant improvement on our performance and availability that weekend. So, We've also, um, in our lab, <coughs> restored our push notification and added some new social media links. So we are slowly but surely evolving and we've got all the ways. So one of the things that, that we're, I, know, I know we're excited about, did you mention the, I apologize, you mentioned the, the outside kiosks. The, uh, no, so we do have, uh, we do purchase those outdoor kiosks. The, the intent would be that uh, the same experience that a user gets on Explorer on their iPhone would be that what they, they're seeing on the, the mobile, uh, the kiosks, and then our staff will use these devices. They'd have access to Explorer as well, but more importantly, our internal mapping systems. Um, and did you bring, can you bring that up on the, that or uh, one of the tabs at the top? Yeah. Okay. Why are these so much heavier than a normal tablet? They are, and it's because they are ruggedized. So that is one of the, that was one of the comments that we had is they are heavy. Um, but for, particularly with field operations, uh, if they're going to be mounted in their trucks, um, okay. they're not going to be carrying them around. Oh, so okay. can I show them why they're ruggedized? Please. Because <laughs> this is what we want to be able to do. And not have to replace it. Right. Uh, my daughter drops her mobile device, her mobile, she has a tablet <laughs> right. that is Windows based, right. which is what we need for security. Jill wanted me probably to drop it to the actual <laughs> floor. Um, I could do that, but this is what we want them to be able to withstand. Wow. Oh. And when that happens, it, it, the screen is still up. Jill, can you get it and show it to everybody? But the screen is actually still up. Can I buy two of those for my sons? <laughs> <laughs> that, that did not break the screen. Now, granted, it's a carpeted floor, but it is not, th th that is why it's heavier. That is great. And our field ops, most of what they're going to do is have it in their truck, in, in, yeah. in, so but it's not be, their desk. They won't be carrying it around no. five hours a day. My SEMRAP, if, That's great. if you know, my goal or our goal at the Gary site, you only get carry it for 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, and it's not, you know, it's got this, this, if I can put it on my hand correctly, 
um, this ability to uh, ask someone to sign is, is our long-term right. goal. Right. Uh, so that a family doesn't have to, you know, we can do things, make an edit, fix something, right. and ask them to sign the, the form right then and there, and it'll data capture it. So <clears throat> the, the weight of the, the device, it's not designed to be something I carry around like this all day long. Right. Uh, so w we believe the, the trade-off um, for that ability to drop it, bump it, smack right. it, spill something on it, so get water. If you notice, it, I, there's a lot, I can do a lot of things in this thing. And that's why Jill said break it. I didn't see any of you guys trying to break it for me. <laughs> that's because people are people and accidents will happen. But you're interviewing for QVC network or something. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but that's why you're heavy. Well, so. Another reason why they're heavy is also that they have two batteries. So yeah. like Ms. Yates said, you know, the um, field ops uh, members will be carrying around in their trucks. They don't have the luxury of going back and recharging. So we have two batteries to keep them uh, operational for the entire day. Well, by like 12 hours? Um, um, it depends on the use and how much brightness, of course, and how much uh, you're utilizing it. But at least, you know, six, seven, six to eight hours. <coughs> should, should for a battery or we're both together? I think for both together. together but if one of the batteries, you can do a hot swap with one of the batteries right. and it will still stay up and running, which is a benefit too, is that you're not you, yanking out a battery and the system shutting down, so it will maintain it. Um, yeah. And you get an indicator for low battery as well, I'm pretty sure. Okay. It, yeah, on the it functions just like your regular desktop or laptop, so, and, and that's basically what that is. It is Seem like a self a smartphone on steroids. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. I'm not sure the the period of time between you do a burial and you get the headstone in. I'm not sure. So we're, we're averaging, and Jill probably could tell me if I'm accurate, but it's somewhere between 45 and 60 days, depending on. So then, what I visualize is the family comes out because they want to see the new headstone, correct? And they see maybe a misspelling of a name or something so your field man right <clears> out there can say oh here is the form to adjust the spelling on your loved one's grave and do it right there instead of sending them to the office or something that could potentially be be an option uh, I, I i won't brag that uh, we've all but eliminated those types of errors because that signature i was was speaking about is actually done uh, in the family room or immediately following the service and the family approves a pre-template of the of the uh, headstone Marker, right. so that those kind of mistakes are not and then we're quality assurance checking the stone when it arrives to the cemetery uh, a quality <clears throat> assurance specialist will have one of these and every stone that comes into the cemetery will be able to be checked against the ordered stone to make sure that what came from the contractor is actually what we received well, and my my experience is we still got errors. Still get people that want to. Yeah. Yep. And, and, and <clears throat> a family member, whether they're here or if they're at home, if they're searching on Explorer and they find any information on on the marker, and it's to be incorrect, they will check for the They can submit feedback directly from that record. It will tie into the location. Yep. So that we we're not searching if it's Joe Smith and which Joe Smith. So we will say it's Joe Smith in session sixty, grade twelve twenty, or whatever the, you know, the well, for the maintenance people in the field, that's a great uh, accelerated way to get something done. That's correct, sir. And, right. and once they do something, because of the, that is the tools we have in Mapper, uh, ter uh, tamping the grave, the grave is tamped, or verifying the work, the work leader or the, the, uh, the supervisor, end of day <clears throat> checks, marking it right away and done, so it's not this making a paper list, carrying it back, tagging it, it's actually doing it real time. And it's also, you know, the other, the other uh, intent that we have for this is whether it's our quality insurance staff, if it's field operations or some reps, that if they're, they walk past a marker, if it's illegible for yes. whatever reason to do the natural process, they can pull up the grave, flag it, and then depending on, you know, if you need to for a reorder or if you've got a series of headstones that need cleaning, they can flag those too and then we can look <coughs> those sections um, and same thing with, with turf. I mean, we, we, those are the long-term plans. Is that yep. It really is to provide greater situational awareness of what our cemetery looks like and how to maintain that pristine look. Yes. 
picture, right? And then send it to somebody. <clears throat> yep, front and rear facing camera on it. But if they see something that's, that's yes, yeah. they could send it a Snap a picture. picture. Yep, email, be able to email it or, or save it. So right now these tablets have cellular service on it. Um, we are in the process of expanding our Wi-Fi throughout the cemetery. So once that's complete, we'll switch off the cellular and, and stay on the Wi-Fi. So that also helps with our cost. Um, we do know that ANMC will be following on after ANMC deploys uh, their business assistance to this to also maintain their... <coughs> you anticipate that, you know, if you're not a technical expert like myself. Uh, I still have a flip phone, I think. Um, what about the maintenance crew? Are they going to be trained on how to get up to speed on this? So the initial is we'll have this field supervisors. Uh, they'll be using it, and then we'll, we'll have our, the, their staff also. And we, we have found that you would be, sir, our, the, the age of our, average age of our field crew is much so younger. That and every one of them has an iPhone in their pocket. They, they, they're the ones showing the families how to use Explorer right. um, that they run into in the cemetery. So uh, there, I, there's a lot of them that are very excited about this. And also the way our business systems are structured, they are permission based. So depending on the level of <coughs> Um, first of all, let me compliment you and, and your team. I, I mean, what this has done is brought Arlington, the a and, I'm talking about the ANC app, has brought Arlington to the world. Uh, it's just outstanding. Um, several of us had uh, asked uh, last year about looking at under notable graves, uh, adding a category of civil rights uh, leaders. And uh, I think we were told y'all would look at that. Can you tell me the status of that and, and you know for any reason you honestly believe we shouldn't do it tell us but I I would think it would be a nice addition to have to, to notable graves categories so um, we as part of our, our <coughs> last year uh, we started having a lot of the cemeteries that were going Civil War um, leaders or you know, notable um, service members who served in World War I or any other conflict, um, we do want that flexibility. Um, so we do hope in the next couple months, couple months, you know, this summer, that we hope to release that, that capability. Um, one of the things that we've done so far, because I think our previous was the reporting lost item, we've added that. So that's another module. <coughs> Okay. Okay. Could, could you report to us at our next full committee meeting the status of the civil rights uh, subcategory? And the historians? That's correct. Civil rights or civil war? Civil, civil rights. Civil rights. Civil rights. Okay. So like Medgar Evers is listed under political yeah. figure, okay. I, I think. So and rights of being. say a civil war. You say civil Well, he's, yeah. she's just referring. <clears throat> she's referring to so the the greater project that she has. Jill puts. Make, Jill gives it access on there, um, but the content management piece of it belongs to the historians and has to. Right. You know, so, and the executive directors looking at all of those categories okay. and how. So, if if you recall, sir, um, much of what you see was inherited. Right. And so instead of removing it completely, we've left it, and it's going through a complete vetting process. How much so longer will that take, do you think? Once that, that's what will be included this exactly. summer, perhaps? Okay. Okay. And just a senior citizen question, I, I was looking at this. <laughs> uh, on, on one of the main pages, it, in, instead of a, going back to the previous uh, page, it, it has the, the horiz three horizontal lines to... To most people, is that automatically, do they read that as yes, being, sir. that's how you go back? I okay. did. Because some of the others have an arrow <laughs> yeah. 
to go back, but this one, this page has just the horizontal line. Well, the horizontal line is a menu. Right. Right. Three He's referring to the uh, the menu. Yes, that that is the uh, the convention used around all applications, mobile, uh, to and even websites these days for the three stack lines to indicate a menu. So if you right. have some kind of navigation, but if I don't want to go to the menu, I want to go to my previous page, or I want to go to my second previous page. Is that is that um, self-explanatory to most people that you hit? If I want to go to the previous page, I. Hit the three horizontal lines. The three, that's, the that's three horizontal way. lines just happens to be your previous page in this case. You should have a device on your phone. Yeah, okay. it should have a little back arrow. Because it's taken because you were at the menu to start right. with. Right, right, okay. So that's what that means. That's okay. menu. So, okay. so the question is, do I'm, you have I'm a... On, I'm on Explore the Cemetery. Right. So the, that goes, takes me back <clears> to my main menu when I go to Explore the Cemetery. If I want to go back and I'm on a sub page, so it takes then it, me the then last it does page. have the arrow yeah. on it. You just happen to be only on one okay. advancement. If you go Okay, so advance. yeah, if I advance one more, then it then does have the arrow. Yes, Perfect, thank you. Great, great, great work on this. Really outstanding. All right, move to EISS. So uh, the next presentation will be by uh, uh, Abi. Calvaputi, and he's going to introduce himself because he'll do a better job than I will. But uh, he is part of our uh, internal contract team that uh, works on. Um, now we're talking, we just talked a lot of external and internal uh, tools. Uh, he is going to talk a little bit about the things we're doing to improve uh, how we manage the uh, audible records of burial and how we manage the cemetery and our operations through that system. So, <coughs> Abby, I'm going to let you do a better job than I just did. Okay, no problem. Thank you. I appreciate uh, your time today and allowing me to speak about the Enterprise Interment Services System. Could you use the microphone, please? Oh, yeah. Right. Could it you hear me? It won't project it, sir. It's just recording it. Abby, if you can speak a little speak louder. Out. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yes, so the Enterprise inter <laughs> uh, Interment Services System is what I'll be talking about today. My name is Abby Kalvaputi. Um, I am a contractor, so feel free to uh, have no holds barred against me. I know that's uh, depending on how you feel, but um, yes, as Ms. Yates said, I've been here for about four years with ANC and uh, have been working on the current system, internment services system, which we refer to as ISS, but we are now trying to scale that across all the cemeteries that, that are on the Army portfolio. So that's why we call it Enterprise Interment <coughs> Services System. So let's establish what EISS really is. Um, what, it, what it does, and like what Ms. Yates alluded to, if I could dovetail off of that, is it's really an auditable system of record for all administration or administrative and op operational aspects of the entire funeral service. But it is a decedent-based system. It works in conjunction with other internal systems, such as Mapper that Jill, Ms. Gaspar, has um, oversaw for the last several years. And uh, it does supply data to the applications that you were using, Mr. Edwards, um, earlier. So Explorer, all its data that is fetching, uh, well, not all of it, but all the decedent-based uh, data regarding um, if you were doing a find, it, find a grave site aspect of that, that application, that is re retrieving data from ISS. So it is imperative that we uh, record data cleanly for operational purposes as well as for posterity uh, to present to other public applications such as our website. Um, if the, f the, the family members who are at attending a service have uh, questions about where to attend or how to attend, what time, that is all being coordinating through, coordinated today through Interment Services System or ISS. The, the goal here is to make that ca those capabilities and functionality <coughs> expanded to the post cemeteries as well as combining with soldier and airman's home data records and uh, make it a more comprehensive tool. Um, in order to do that, we found opportunities to improve the existing legacy system, uh, to modernize it with uh, functionality like Ms. Gaspar alluded to earlier, um, for compliance reasons with the DOD for role-based access, so supervisors have a different perspective of how to maintain and, and edit data versus the cemetery representatives or field operation uh, maintenance crew. So that is essentially what we intend to build out with Enterprise 
um, a term and services system. What, what is this based on? Is this a, 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 it, it a is commercial a, off the shelf? No, it is an entirely custom application. Um, as you know, Arlington is a very unique environment. It has many complex business rules that kind of overlap each other. So there's a lot of different circumstances as to why we'd need to customize all our data is customized in it, of course, and, but to make that data available and interact with each other has to be customized. Um, so they, cho they chose it to be uh, based out of a Microsoft.NET C Sharp uh, platform, uh, but we are essentially modernizing it for the Web 2.0 standards so that it can be viewed on a tablet, um, like Ms. Gaspar said, for the field crew or anybody, the SEM so reps around. What IP is this then? I'm sorry? This is government IP? Yes, that's correct. And is it uh, monetizable? Um, how do you mean, sir? Yeah, sir, can you define that for those yeah. of us? Could you, is this something that would have applicability? I mean, I, mean I, I know you're unique, but go to a VA cemetery. Yes, sir. I don't know, Gene, yes, what sir. would they say? How unique is it, yeah. you know? So, uh, so is there, yes, sir. is this something that could be? There are aspects of it that are definitely reusable, and Which in fact, true of most big ERP kinds of systems, right? Right, uh, and um, particularly uh, to shed an example on that, the DoD has requested to utilize our system and our database and our, our, the way we conduct our processes for capturing the life cycle of that decedent record. Uh, my, my next so question is going to be about out of the purview of this committee, but the forty uh, cemetery, army cemeteries. What, you know. That is. That's the next step is to expand for A and MC, and then, as Mr. Calvin-Pudi was saying, uh, DoD uh, has also expressed interest. And we, I've been working with the National Cemeteries Administration and their team because as they're, they're looking for the next generation sure. of what yeah. boss yeah. will be their their burial operating then. system. Yes, sir. We're all working together, because uh, to to back well. up, we we took ISS the interment uh, what was a scheduling system in 2010 mm -hmm. turned it into ISS interment mm -hmm. services the, system the briefings. that yeah. and we changed it to model it after the decedent based process that the barrel operating system uses mm -hmm. so we already kind of came in line with with NCA and now we've gone beyond that with this system we'll be multiple cemeteries and he's got some demos he'll, he'll run you through and it shows where I think we've already got it mocked up, Soldier Nairman's home. Uh, so he'll he'll be able to show you right. where that's headed to, sir. Okay. It'll be more of a notional example, but yep. it'll still illustrate the points that Ms. Yates has made. Um, but going back, as I said, you know, there's a, a slew of applications that we use for daily operations. You know, we have Mapper, we have the photo application for taking photographs of markers for the um, for an accountability effort to maintain that we've ordered the marker as prescribed by the family and according to the rules that the VA NCA um, imposes so we have to make sure that we're very delicate about how we process those markers um, and then we also use something <coughs> called the research tool which was the original accountability tool that was meant for vetting records all the historical records here at ANC and then it essentially moved that uh, those records into the current state where they currently reside in ISS but that just illustrates to you with the, the number of applications that it listed that it's very decentralized. The goal is to centralize it a little bit more to have the photo app and research tool work in conjunction with this EISS so that it's comprehensive. And I can go into a little bit more the, in the next slide which talks about all its features that we intend to integrate. So many of these bullets are either aspects of the application or aspects of our operations on the administration side that um, will be integrated in some fashion and backed by IT and that's essentially what EISS will accomplish for us so off the bat multiple sites and roles and permissions are the key fundamental aspects as to why we invested in expanding an existing legacy application but we took this opportunity to make it better improve it uh, from the ground up so when you're asking questions about COTS or GOTS there's really nothing that is out there to purchase that conforms to what we need. So we essentially had to uh, develop this from the ground up again. Um, the funeral service re resource management is what we do today, but we need to make that customizable for each of the post cemeteries as well as 
uh, DOD cemeteries, depending on how they conduct their operations. So they, what, what uh, ANC uses as far as caissons and uh, things that are unique to ANC may not be available at the next cemetery. So uh, chain of custody, we need to be able to automate that process. Um, currently, it's very manual and a lot of paperwork involved with that. Um, we do have the ability to take photographs with the government-issued iPhones, um, but it doesn't directly go into our system, so that is something that we in intend to integrate uh, so that it, 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 it is a more streamlined process for our cemetery representatives. Quick question on uh, yes, sir. the chain of custody. I know how important that is, and, I, and if I'm not mistaken, uh, the funeral home sends the body to probably here. So having said that, like the family member, do you see uh, putting in a system where uh, each time the uh, the uh, merchant, uh, the product, not product, but the body, get moved from one st one point to another, you get an email, the person that initiated it, like the family member or the funeral home, get like an email. And I say that because I, it reminds me when I uh, purchase a car and it lets you know where's that. We just put it on the truck. Expect three days to the location. So when you get to the location, you get an email. So I was just throwing that out there. So just, do you see something like so, that happening? So chain of, chain of custody for us is, is a positive control. So it's it's person to person mm -hmm. conducted. Um, we we have talked about at times uh, the, the implementation of some sort of uh, RFID tracking process. Uh, not necessarily it, it, for the amount of time we do not accept remains, but three days before and those are cremated and they're hand carried, uh, signed <coughs> over. From the uh, from the funeral home to the cemetery rep, mm -hmm. the cemetery rep then signs it to the field crew and they put it, you know, interment in the ground. So, you know, it's something we've we've talked about. The question the sergeant major is asking is, okay, where's the family member in this, right? Is Along the way, so they don't know, you know, so they, do they know uh, that, that, that the that majority of our remains come carried by the f seventy percent are cremated, and of those seventy percent, only about. A third come before the service the family doesn't carry it themselves. So now, what about but the body? Uh, the, the casket. The casket, yeah. casket is with the funeral director, and then it's transferred yeah. to us. See, that's what I was thinking about. Yeah. I, not saying all. Well, I want to believe all funeral homes are top notch and got the best people handling this. Yeah. But, but we know the world is round as well. <laughs> but it would, well the, to answer this question, the funeral home. Uh, say we had a death in Hawaii. Okay and they want, they're eligible for Arlington, okay? Sure. That funeral home in Hawaii has to coordinate with the funeral home here. Right. And the remains are transferred and the chain of custody is up to that funeral home until it reaches a cemetery. Day of the service for a casket, et cetera, remains and with the family project, present. This may be six months when they make their application. Yeah. Right, so if we would just visualize, you know, a cemetery representative is coordinating all these details, through a system called Remedy, we have a customized instance of Remedy, uh, which is a case tracking or case management tool. And they're reaching out to the family members who are also in con contact with the funeral home. And sometimes our cemetery representatives are talking directly with the funeral homes. So we do take information and plop it into the, the record. We do say the sending, receive, uh, uh, sending and receiving funeral homes, we populate that information. But these are also opportunities to improve how that data entry is put in. Um, right now, a lot of it is free form, so that r results in a lot of variability with the data. And if we were to uh, run metrics as to how to um, say this particular state or this particular uh, funeral home in general gets a lot of, uh, uh, they do a lot of the shipping or they do a lot of the receiving, and maybe we can target how we communicate with them to improve our messaging about how Second we. Second device. More. Right. Yeah. But uh, essentially, EISS will, be, ha, will have cleaner inputs essentially on the form and how the data is entered into the system. Did that answer your question, sir? Yeah, I just wanted to throw some modern technology because I, I do have a smartphone, not a flip <coughs> phone, so I'm aware of how that stuff operates. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> Had to hit you on that. Touche. <laughs> <laughs> the, the case management tool that I alluded to a little bit ago will still be intact, but there is an aspect of it that coordinates the service. Usually about, I don't know, Miss Hates, off the top of your head, do you know the percentage of callers that call to schedule a loved one for service? I know that, the, I mean, the number total, you know, exceeds 7,000. It's closer to 7,500 uh, a year. 
call is just a schedule of service. And then on top of that, every call, every one of those has probably got at least 25 calls associated with it. Right. So when that process is essentially initiated, um, they record information into this, this case tracking tool, what we refer to as ANC case management. It's a customized COTS product as a, a, off of a BMC Remedy. Um, we want to decouple that and, and centralize it into EISS because what we are essentially finding out is our same cemetery representatives have to access two systems. They have to take data out of one and re-record it manually into the other. Um, we could invest in uh, integrating the applications, but then that is also more footprint from an IT standpoint and more maintenance from the IT standpoint. So it's best to integrate it into something that where we can determine eligibility within one system and then have that record continue on for the rest of the scheduling process and then ultimately ordering a marker and then having that QA'd and, and so on. Um, and then that takes me to the next point. Marker order system will allow us to expand the current capabilities that we do today. Um, several years ago we had uh, when we implemented this marker order system, it was to uh, the ability to work in conjunction with the VA because they are the ones who actually produce the markers and their contract teams, and then they send it to us. This will allow us to actually um, order in bulk. As you know, we do 30, uh, 30 services a day here at the cemetery, so in a week's time, you know, 150 services, there's a lot of markers to order. So if somebody were to go into the VA system and, and actually hand type it in, it could take a whole day or a couple of days to actually process. And the, the uh, backlog would be growing faster than what they can actually output. So that's why the marker order system is actually very vital for our operations. And then the last module would be the quality assurance is to the constant comprehensive check on our own data and how it's being recorded against existing and to be prescribed processes. Um, Arlington's processes are very, very tight in terms of how we, in what we've learned over many, many, uh, many, many decades of operating. Uh, so the QA team is an independent team that is, is meant for uh, assessing our process and make, make, making sure that we're adhering to our own prescribed processes so that our data is flowing in and out um, cohesively. Any questions on this slide? Anything to add, Ms. Yates? Great job. All right, this next slide, um, I'm going to give a brief demo. I, I believe everyone has a copy of the slides, so I'm just going to break away from the presentation here and give you a quick demonstration of what EISS is in meant to look like. It's currently still in development, um, but we were, we were given this demonstration back in March, so in that time they've made significant progress as well. But what I have is still the build copy from March to show you. Um, would it be sufficient so, to show ISS as well? I was going to say, well, I can just, so essentially from, and, and somebody mentioned about training of the field crew and, and the use of the, the tools. My biggest concern was changing a system that, that is, is more, that has better data integrity with it, but now I put myself behind the power curve of teaching them a whole new interface. So the, the, the system itself reflects greatly on how we operate today. This is the, diff the look and feel of this page is much like what my internment services team would see. He's going to bring it up real quick uh, for our barrel uh, system today, ISS. Um, it's going to have a, the same functionality, uh, but it will talk to itself and inside itself much better. So, so as you this can is see, it's very similar look. Yep. You have your navigation pane on the left. You have a summary of the information on the schedule screen on the top. All the uh, uh, services for today um, with a notable active duty here um, and another with all the data kind of populating for everyone's situational awareness for, for today's services. Uh, similarly, we wanted to maintain that. Like Ms. Yates said, we want to make, make it easier <coughs> to adapt to a new system. <coughs> Uh, without it feeling uh, completely like a fish out of water when you're trying to uh, uh, maintain this, the, the rate and pace, pace of, of operations too. Our operational tempo of scheduling services each day for conducting 150 services a week. Right. So um, 
Earlier I mentioned the whole, uh, and we talked about one of the themes for today was about mobility and being able to access this data while you're out in the field. I mean, uh, we know that the cemetery is not run entirely from behind a desk. So it makes uh, it all the more imperative to be able to access these systems from a tablet and f to see what it would look like on a tablet. So uh, that is why, even though this is what's consider considered a web application, not a native application, it's accessed through the, a website, um, that this site be res what's called responsive or responsive uh, user interface. Um, it's an industry term that's meant for f to show flexibility on multiple screens. So if you're on a mobile or a tablet or behind a projector or something like that, where it expands and it allows to, uh, for viewing the data and the information a little bit better. So I'm just going to show that as an example here. And uh, how how the table, if you look at the this. Um, the summary, and, and we know that there's, <coughs> this is just a test site, so there's going to be some misspellings and stuff. But um, we just wanted to show you the, the, the functionality here and how the table is shrinking as I drag my screens, and the menu is also changing. It's just adapting. Um, so that is the, the goal of responsive UI, and uh, they did a good job with that. Um, it's backed by a technology called Bootstrap, which allows you to um, rapidly to build these responsive frameworks very quickly. So it's an open source uh, technology. And here, like we saw in the ISS screen, um, EISS will be fitted with all the information. And on the left, we have the modules or components that we will extend this base uh, ent enterprise interment services system with. So. Uh, the burial request will supersede the need for using the case management tool for scheduling. So a, a process will be when somebody calls, they'll open up EISS and begin that process for creating a record. And we have, I think, the ability to kind of show at a, at a so high level the, what it might One of the look points like. I want to make here is highlight to, the, to this uh, body that, uh, if you'll recall, one of the Department of Defense IG uh, deficiencies was this dual entry. This, this data integrity dual entry two system uh, and and this implementation of this and the from the from the initial barrel request forward it'll be in one system and and that data will be able to be maintained and, and quality checked in one location right and this is again very notional um, there's a lot of work to be done in terms of actually building this functionality out which they're currently doing who's but you say they're doing who's doing? it's a contract team um, I, I don't know Ms. Yates, if we're permit, permitted to say, or because okay, so I'm, yeah, I, I, I'm just so this it's not DOD that's doing this. It's no, this is an ANC funded project um, within the OCIO. So the Chief of Information Officer is overseeing this, and it's a, it's a Gaspar and I are part of that organization. So this example that I'm looking at right here, you, you mentioned something earlier about burial requests. So th this is the person that initiated? That's correct. And that's what I was talking about. So they initiated, I see the uh, email address <coughs> out there. So as it goes through the channels, the check and balance, uh, the next level, it could be notified or whatever. That, that's why I asked that question. There are definitely um, areas in the process where we could send a notification message. And, and we currently do that today. We currently um, use that today okay. for some things, not necessarily remains related. Yeah. But yeah, right. So uh, we will continue to maintain existing functionality, but improve it in terms of how it's organized in the actual system. So if we have to modify it, it wouldn't invest a whole lot of IT development time. So, uh, don't want to spend a whole lot of time going over the key aspects as I have done in the previous slide, um, but I mentioned one of the key facets of EISS and what makes it EISS is the scalability to multiple cemeteries or multiple sites. Um, this would be the, the intended navigability aspect of changing your perspective of what data or what cemetery you're currently operating within the application. Now it is going to be a role-based system. Currently, for uh, demonstration purposes, I have access to all these cemeteries, and you know some don't really have an image yet. We're still working on gathering all the images for each cemetery, uh, but we the intention is to be able to switch and toggle um, which cemetery you're currently operating in. Now, there's no real data behind this. This is just for in demonstration purposes only, but that is the intended way to, or the proposed way 
that we uh, intend to adhere to that requirement of managing multiple sites. So, for instance, he switched to Soldiers and Airmen's Home. Uh, those services are scheduled by ANC because ANC manages that cemetery. So the uh, cemetery representatives uh, would be able just to switch right to that page. Right. I guess that's the right word for it. Right. What's the right word for it, Ami? It's, it's just a multiple. It's yeah. another site. Right. Um, like that site and uh, be able to manage data for the Soldier and Airman's home that simply. Right now, today, it's not that simple. I have to open up a different interface. I have to use a different, have to have different permissions, different, it's just another management process we have to go through. This simplifies it. Um, and for the ANMC staff, who's responsible for, you know, has that broader oversight, they, they would have access to, to looking down into, drilling down into all of them. And I dare to say potentially dashboard ability uh, for all the data for all the Army cemeteries. Right, and because we're dealing with multiple sets of data, we have to decide, and, and there's got to be a governance effort behind this internally within the Army that decides who gets to see what data and who gets to, who, who's the audience for that data. Um, input. <coughs> not only just inputting, but also the outputs as well, right? So we want to see the aggregates and who should have access. I would think the people who are st stewards of the data or, you know, who are maintaining the data, um, should be able to have access to, so that that's those are generally called super users or super, you know people who have kind of like almost god privileges on an application where they can see everything um, but that's why we have to build in this role based system uh, or role based access control so that uh, if you were, if you do not have that access you shouldn't be able to see that data sure. so it's just that that whole need to know aspect of and compliance of um, information assurance and uh, to show an example of that, we have users and roles, and um, we should be able to see that I should be able to look for um, a, a user. Um, let's see. There's only one user in this, in this <laughs> demonstration, so I should be able to edit this person's information uh, and give and assign permissions as I see fit for this person's role as they... Uh, play in Arlington or whatever um, cemetery across the Army portfolio and DOD portfolio. And, and this is, you know, it, this is important to us because right now the system we have doesn't have this uh, level of control uh, right. for, for it's, it's an all or nothing system. That's correct. Um, we have very broad stroke roles and permissions and it's not granular to the point where if you didn't want somebody to meddle with a particular aspect uh, and you want wanted to kind of cut cut off that functionality so that you can retrain for instance uh, stop the bleeding to, so to speak so that you don't have to invest more uh, resources internally to fix the records you could manage it more uh, discreetly here um, which is which is nice and you can also create custom roles, and this helps with our in-processing and out-processing aspects of our organization um, and training as well. You, you, if you want to pick, the, pick a can role that they're filling in, uh, if, if Interment Services hires a new SEM rep, then we can just say, assign these permissions and they're ready to go. Um, and, you know, different, there's different stakeholders that use this system. You know, we have chaplains uh, that, that offer their services for the actual funeral services and they need to see the data too but maybe not everything uh, they need to see just kind of the areas they touch so that's another areas where where we will flesh out in terms of functionality any questions about roles how hardwired versus configurable is this because it's custom um, it'll allow, allow us to we have a, a lot of well let me just back up we've uh, particularly my team has prescribed a change management process for uh, vetting uh, IT change requests, uh, particularly around EISS and ISS. And uh, we do also consider Mapper and all the integrated systems as well. But we have a, a significant backlog of ideas that have flowed through our system for the last four years, or th through that process. And what that will allow us to do is comprehensively continue to push to improve this. Now, Technologically speaking, because it is custom, we have this entire backlog in mind, and we will be scaling the system so that with the ideas in mind. That's a little different. 
I, I mean, I appreciate the importance of configuration management and you know governance and all that. What I'm asking is, is one of your design principles about configurability as opposed to having to have a, another project yet to add a, a line or a, a roll or whatever. And so it's, there, it goes a little bit back to what I'm saying about more universal applicability of it when you get different users who say, yeah, I don't have that role, I have this role and I want to, or I want to add a, right. you know, a Muslim chaplain or something. You know? Right, right. Um, so in that, <coughs> I don't have a way to show or demonstrate the that? Answer is, the me. answer is yes, sir. Uh, that is the one thing that, that frustrates me more than anything else right now about my current system is when, when I'll say the truth, or when the reality changes and we want to add something that I believe is a very simple add type of chaplain, add a new role. We will have a management. You have the, we have it up there, right? What's the? Uh, yeah, so manage, managing roles. No, the, the, the CMS of this. As far as the, con yeah, so. Got the content management, uh, editability, the super user admin. Yeah, so I, if I show an example of ISS, I can show the resources. And to, to illustrate Ms. Yates' frustration is that. You can see that ANC is customized with all the, t the types of resources. So to your point, Mr. Peek, you mentioned if I wanted to add a, uh, um, an imam, for instance, if that were something that we were to, to add. Uh, right now, we don't have that capability. We have to issue a change request and have it uh, accommodated by a developer or a development team. Um, see, that, that's different than saying it's configurable. Yeah. What you're saying is you've got to re heart you've got to do Currently. a development project. Currently. Currently. What we intend to go to is a system that will be configurable. That's, that was my yes. question. Yes. Okay, I, I wasn't sure if you were asking technically yeah. in yeah. the weeds about the architecture or. Well, yeah, it is. It, I mean, the architecture has to support that if you're going to go that way. But, That's what right. I'm so. Hearing. I'm, I'm, not, well, I'm just trying to understand. No problem, sir. So what, essentially that, that entry is just a, another row in a table. Right now, we have no way to insert a row in a table. But you will have it. But we will have it. That's how they intend to customize the needs of every cemetery that's <coughs> under this portfolio of, that will use the ISIS. A resource list would be available, would be used for every cemetery? It would Not be, necessarily. It would be customizable okay. based upon what they need. Okay. The differences and, and so it, it's the administration tab, the administrative. Right. Uh, there, there's a whole new process that we don't currently have. There he goes. And that is where we'll be able, the super user is the term I'm going to use, right. will be able to configure the site or the particular cemetery's information um, so it's customizable to them. This, the answer is yes, sir. Okay. Right, so like an ANC supervisor <laughs> wouldn't want to necessarily manage West Point's, you know. There's a difference in the word session. It's important. Okay. Appreciate the question. Sorry. Um, anything else you'd like to go over? Okay. Uh, to Ms. Gaspard's er earlier point about uh, the tablets and why we selected that particular hardware was to enable CAC, uh, you know, the, the common access card, uh, two-factor authentication. It's a requirement for uh, all DoD systems. And the hardware will allow us to access this web application um, as well. So this will be a CAC-enabled application, and particularly why we couldn't use Apple products. I was going to say that's another reason why we, we went to, where's the CAC? It's on the back. It's a little sleeve. Um, it's being covered up right now by, by that. So these will be able, there it is. Good. So we can take this up. But the other requirement with your card reader is that when you insert it, um, it has to, your photo should not be facing forward. And of course now I can't do this, but um, oh. so it tucks in and now your photo is obscured. Um, so little tiny nitpicky things, but this is one of the reasons why it was selected. Again, meeting those IA uh, requirements. Now for cat reader, so uh, you have to have the cat card from this 
So like I work at the Pentagon, so I couldn't use my CAC in there. You you could, but <coughs> what you could do would be different. But yes, okay. sir. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. And that's the beauty of these. They won't have to be configured to the uh, user. Um, you know, we're on a team, and I can today. I'm working on a certain thing. I'm using it, and I tomorrow, Mr. Edwards slips his CAT card in, and so it doesn't have to be assigned to, a, to the individual so user. So if Ms. Yates drops hers and breaks it, she'll say, Jill, give me your tablet, and she'll be able to continue. But but I'm not going to break it when I drop it. True. <laughs> you can dump coffee on it, and I'll still <laughs> right. and I can dump coffee on it. <laughs> All right. Um, you know, there's four main lines of effort that's currently ongoing. Um, Ms. Yates had just at a high level. I'll just touch, yeah, touch base. Um, we mentioned last year that we we're focusing on a migration effort. Um, some pieces of that are still ongoing, um, par partially because of the sheer amount of data and the size that we have to transfer. Um, it is an interagency effort, so we have to work. Um, well, when I say agency, I'm talking Arlington Cemetery and a sister agency within the Army Portfolio Army Analytics Group. Um, so in coordination with that, there's different contracting rules and, and regulations that allow when people can work and how to get the data over and what method we can actually transfer the data. Um, so that's still ongoing and our target co for completion is, I believe, at the end of this month. Um, Which will be in, in <coughs> we call it the first domino that will fall that will start to get us um, down the road uh, a little what, faster. Yeah, what this slide is meant to illustrate is that these lines of effort are being done in parallel. Uh, the second line of effort is the ISS, you know, current operations and maintenance enhancements uh, that we've selected about 12 to 14 change requests um, to to scale to the immediate needs of of Ms. Yates and you know the the ANC leadership of what they've decided to improve till we get EISS. Um, we're also consolidating our iOS or Apple-based um, photo applications that currently enable you know, our QA team members to go out and take photographs of these markers after they've been ordered and set. Uh, we're consolidating that so that it can be used exclusively on the tablet so that you have a, one device to do everything, mapper, uh, website, EISS, photo application. Um, so that we actually just con con completed the alpha testing. We're heading towards beta testing where we are going to be uh, testing more functionality, such as uh, saving the record and how to post that record to um, a, a database. And then eventually the EISS build out, which is targeted currently at the current um, op tempo of uh, early 2018. And in the right box to the right of that blue arrow, uh, we have all the priorities of modules that we will be focusing on. So in an iterative method, we will be focusing on multiple sites, roles and permissions, uh, the resource management, like we talked about, configurability, um, the chain of custody, and then burial request, mark order system, and QA to round out the big pieces or the pillars of, of maintaining um, the op-tempo of ANC administration. Right. And that I basically summarized that in the previous slide. Okay, yep, uh, you basically went through most of this. Right. Uh, the, this is just to kind of illustrate uh, the development team's progress in what they've been setting up, the application framework, uh, how, how effectively they've been with <coughs> several <coughs> CRs, and how close we are to an actual deployment of a software release. Um, and what we'll be focusing on next, actually, this coming Monday, my team and uh, several other folks within the OCIO will be working in conjunction with that development team to map out other functionality that we intend to release in the next build. So uh, we are working constantly on this. Any uh, feedback or questions? Just a comment. Yes, <laughs> the days of the smoke signal, Pony Express, <laughs> Telegraph, we come a long way. I, I like the direction we're going. I like that product. I know it's probably get better. In time, I, I like that. Thank you, sir. You saved the old, did, you, did you save the old file cards that they used to use when you guys came in? <laughs> Those went to the National Archives. <laughs> Along with the dinosaur. <laughs> the, um, we did save a couple just for uh, memory's sake. And um, 
I'm sure everyone knows that you know those those records have been scanned into PDF form, so we do have access to them, and it does help today's operations. We use them, every, and this system will allow me to see them quicker and easier. Is there a problem with upload or download time? Like, and you're trying to get a photo, and it's like taking you a day to do that. Or? Um, with respect to the the marker the photos, photos? And the, just getting that information. So it depends on which application you're referring to it's if, if I take it today and then it sends it it goes and then it takes a, a, a period of time to get to our system for quality review <clears throat> but then posting it is relatively quickly and retrieving it once it's been posted is very quick Any other questions? Is, is, is this being hosted by DISA then or well, all, all DOD systems are hosted by DISA, uh, or talked about server setup, and I was just curious. Right, so know. because of uh, the, we are transferring um, one system from the Pentagon to the Army Analytics Group out in Fairfield, California, uh, we are maintaining an existing system, and all, all the while, at the same time, building up a new system. So we had to set up a new set of servers for that new system. So the Army Analytics Group is, is where it is. And then all of our systems will be out there. So then um, when we moved Mapper, um, our response times went significantly, four times faster. That, that was one of the initial feedbacks we got from staff was once we migrated to Army Analytics, one of the first calls I got was from one of the cemetery reps saying this loaded significantly faster than they've ever seen. And so just getting you know, a couple extra minutes a day through definitely improves the efficiency of our operations because they're mostly a virtualized environment we can add re computing resources pretty quickly um, so like in mappers case we prior to the migration we felt that we could increase the number of computing resources in advance of Memorial Day and some of these peak traffic weekends so I think that really helped out with Explorer <coughs> Are there any other questions, comments? With the Star Major, we're, this is a step forward in your digital transformation here. So yes, sir. Thanks. Thank you. Appreciate your time. All right. We're about to. Um, this, we have, we're going to uh, adjourn for executive time for our, our lunch for just the committee members. Um, and we will uh, then at 1245 reconvene in here uh, for the rest of our open agenda. Mr. Chairman, can I, can I ask, do, do we need till 1245 or could we, it, based on the public announcement of this being a public meeting, can we, I don't, I don't know if we all need nearly an hour. And unless there are members who need to make 12:30, if that's 12 30. I mean, anybody object to 12:30? We'll okay. give us 15 more minutes. Talk, yes, sir. Very good. Great. Thanks. As we say in the Marine Corps, the private pay is correct. <laughs> <laughs> so 12:30, if everyone could be back in their seats, please. Thank you. <clears throat>